Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building or on the line, Sean Paul. What's up? What's up, Sean Paul? Now, where that? Now, you've been um, quarantining in Jamaica. Yes, sir. That's that's not such a bad thing when when it's always nice. It's the island, the great food, and nothing. That's not a bad thing. Nah, um, you know, I, I've been loving the family time as well, and the studio time. I've been getting a lot of that. So, uh, you know, it's good. I mean, there, there's there's different challenges, but we do it, and it, it's not that bad for me. You know, I've been enjoying watching your wife has her own podcast too. I think that's yeah. really dope to see her, you know, just being able to talk about your relationship and what she has going on. Are there ever things that she talks about that you got to discuss later? Like, I didn't know you felt like that. <laughs> yeah, I guess one or two things. Uh, <laughs> but but even without a podcast, that's every day. That's, I, that's, I'm pretty sure Envy, you know, in a marriage is like, what? That's how you feel? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, she's always been, a, you know, a media person, mm -hmm. you know, when we when we first started doing uh, going out back in the day, she was working on TV out here, so it's a natural thing for her. She presents well. I encourage her to do it all the time, you know. So, what did you get done during the pandemic besides family time? What were you able to do? Any reflection? Anything that you you done that you you don't usually do? Um, it was a lot more. I, I think I've been uh, back into getting fit a, a bit more. On the road is kind of hard, you know, we travel a lot more than six months out of the year. And so it's kind of like you come off the plane, you're tired, you don't want to hit the gym really, you, don't, you know what I mean? But I had space and time now to do that and, and a lot more music. Um, you know, two albums this year. I'm about to drop the second one this summer. So, yeah, uh, that's the kind of vibes, you know what I mean? Uh, the training I'm doing is swimming again. And a little bit of water. Um, the water polo is kind of out because of the physical contact and all that. But I, I, I do a little basketball, and I mean, just for some cardio. Mm. Now, I know you're ready to get back on the road, though. So, and listen, we were trying to get you to come here, but they're like, I promise you, Sean Paul is not traveling right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a thing. Be? It's a thing. I don't know. Uh, I'm still not yet taking a vaccine. Uh, I almost went this morning and realized that I have this to do, so I, I postponed again. And I'm scared of it, man. So uh, in every every excuse I get. So thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we both, both me and Envy are vaccinated. Charlemagne didn't get his, but we. The reason I got mine though was because I know eventually I'm gonna end up having to do it because of the convenience of being able to move around and do things. And that's yeah. why I did it, because I'm like i going to end up doing it. But I, I wanted to wait a little bit to see what happened with everybody first. Yeah, myself. It's kind of like when I went to Japan and they was like, we eat this puffer fish. And I was like, how long it take to affect you? They said, well, 15 minutes, you know that you're poisoned. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to wait. And everybody else at the table kind of like dug in. So it's, that's the feeling I have, man. I don't know. And I always trust my gut feeling. Um, Big up to everybody who's done it. You all is brave, because this is crazy. Uh, but yeah, you know, um, I, I would love to get back to what we call, what, to, to feeling like I'm supposed to, or what we're calling normal. Uh, but you know, it, it kind of shook me up for the first five months. I didn't do nothing. I have asthma, so I got real scared of mm -hmm. it, you know what I mean? And then literally kind of crawled out of my shell and went back to the studio and started to do music that way. So. Uh, I guess for me, uh, that gave me an outlet. And, and right now I'm still kind of battling with the decision. A lot of people, a lot of friends and family of mine have gotten it. So I'm more comfortable with the, with, with the idea right now. But, you know, I've been one of those people who kind of been hitching. Now, I know you've seen during the pandemic all the verses, and I know you've seen the one with, with Beanie Man. And would you yeah. think about doing a, a verses? Uh, my, my stands up first. I didn't want to do it, uh, seeing that it's called versus battle. I got a lot of respect for Tim, a lot of respect for Swiss. I got a lot of respect for everybody who's been on it. But the battle part, I just didn't, I didn't get. And I was not someone who was like running to see it. You know what I mean? Like I'm in groups on my phone and people's like, yo, another versus on. I'm like, all right, I'm having a good conversation right now. And I didn't really go to see every one of them. I didn't, I didn't run, rush to see them. And so my, my opinion of it was like, I don't want to battle uh, 
Shaggy. I don't want to battle. It's more a celebration, you know I mean? though. It's more a celebration of the catalog. I, I get it. Yeah, I get I, it now. I saw you I said you could do one like that. D'Angelo did, where you're just basically by that's yourself and your collabs. That's the only one I saw that I liked, that I was like, yo, that, that's the kind of thing I want to do. Because going up against someone, even if it's in uh, just, you know, uh, for having fun and that kind of thing, it does spark. I mean, I see people argue about it every day. And I don't want to argue about <laughs> Shanti and Keisha Cole. I want to be like, yo, the both of them beautiful, sexy, amazing, sound great. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, that was my stance. Um, if I could do one with like D'Angelo, maybe I would. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. Th that was just my thing. So, yeah. Shaggy said you scared of him, and that's the reason you don't want to do it. Now he didn't say that. 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 He's like, I just yeah. saw him. <laughs> Shaggy my big bro, yo. <laughs> he didn't say Shaggy that. Shaggy my big bro. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't trying to battle with me, man. <laughs> I love that you and Shaggy did that song with Spice. I know that was really exciting for her to get two legends. I mean, all three yeah, of y'all are, are legendary on a song together, and the song is popping. So how did that come together? Um, Shaggy reached out to me, you know, we have many conversations on the phone a lot, you know, people were like, we're always like, we as dancehall people are the genre of reggae dancehall music, we need to collab more, you know, a lot, of, that's what it's about in the in the universe right now, uh, that's what it's about when I'm thinking internationally, I gotta collab with this one, that one, you know, uh, I've had a few years in the biz, so it helps to have younger fans know who I am, and so for that reason, I did an album called Live and Living this year, which featured everybody who, or a lot of people who I rate in the dancehall community, producers, engineers, and artists. And then, you know, when he reached out to me, I was like, yo, I'm definitely down with that movement. Uh, Cause we've been talking about it on the phone. You know, I've seen Junior Gang do, we, we, we spoke of that also. We need to do collabs, we need to tour more. And then I seen him make, uh, you know, develop the Jamrock Cruise, which that inspired me. And I was like, you know, Jamrock Cruise is a cruise that happens every year. Mm -hmm. A lot of reggae artists on the ship and we go around the Caribbean and everybody parties and have a good time. So with those movements, I was like, you know, this is inspiring me to do collabs more in my own genre. And it was a no brainer for me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of Spice, I'm a fan of Shaggy. As I said, he's my big bro. And we talk a lot on the phone about the business and how we can help people to reach a different level. Um, and yeah, the rhythm was crazy, so I jumped on it immediately. I, I liked it, it with... was nice and hardcore too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I see you, you working with a lot of younger artists too, I, and, and you know, a lot of times you don't see that too much. A lot of times the OGs in the game don't feel like they should work with the young ones, but you were so inviting to the young artists. Why was that? Um, I'm a fan of something like Governor. I'm a fan of Governor. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a fan of uh, Massacre different people on different songs on that album but uh you know also i just feel like instead of being like ah, i don't have, well, I have nothing to do with this trap dance hall or the new sound or whatever i think i should embrace it and, and interject what i can into it so you know with each player it takes it to a different point in the game and so uh instead of me pushing an intense away I'd rather to see the the, the the similarities between me and his career in terms of his voice is like something that just reaches through, it cuts through, everybody knows it's him when he's on the track, and myself too. So uh, things like that allow me to kind of look into it and say, yo, let me just uh, work with these dudes, you know what I mean? I'm working with young people like Becky G in the international circles. Why not work with the young cats in... In, in my own genre who are making waves right now. It might not be, you know, millions of people around the world that know them, but I could try to shed a light on that. And that's what we're doing with, with Spice. Now, Spice is huge. She's big, she got her own following. But also me and Shaggy are quite uh, huge as well. And we got different people that may not be paying attention or listening to what's going on with a Spice or like, as I said, uh, Skilly Bang or Massacre. And um, I just feel that it's, it's me taking part in the history and doing what I should do. You know what I mean? This genre is taking me all over the world. It's treating me very good. And I don't want to just uh, move away and be the person that's like, I, I think that would be um, me turning into a culture vulture. You know, I started out with authentic rhythms and, and uh, authentic uh, tracks coming out. And I want to kind of take it back to that space. I think that the world is kind of more ready for that also. You know, big up Bujabantan on the album, big up 
um, Busy Signal on the album, Junior Gang is on this album, Big Up Chiching Ching on the album, uh, all the new cats I just mentioned, Squash, Skilly Bang, Massacre, Governor, um, you know, Big Up Left Side on the album. A lot of people I work with on the album is great producers and great artists. So uh, it's a good look all around, you know what I mean? You know, it's interesting you say that because it is really hard, I feel like, for a dancehall artist to get that international success. There's a, only a few that have achieved it. And when we had Miss Pat up here from VP Records, she was saying that you are the biggest artist, you know, um, on VP Records to date. And so for yourself, why, what do you think is the formula for that? Or is there a formula? Why do you think you've been able to uh, attain that? I, I really, I mean, everybody asks me a formula. I don't, I, I've done this step by step and representative of how I felt um, was the video, uh, Give Me The Light, when I stepped into the darkness and there was like nothing there. And I, I felt, you see me feel something and then I step anyway with faith, you know what I mean? And the, the ground lights up. That For me, back in the day, that's really how I felt. It wasn't about, well, I'm gonna control the place and I got everything locked. I have the formula, I know what's going on. Sometimes I don't. There's some songs I do that ain't, they don't, they don't hit any charts. They don't do nothing. Um, but it's how I felt inside is what I wanted to bring out. And it's what, uh, you know, um, I think my fans respect for me or like for me. So that's part of the thing. A lot of people point to different systematic things in this earth. Like, you know, all oh, the light skin thing and whatever, whatever. And, and I get it, you know what I mean? There, there's, there's different things that we are all caught in a system of, of uh, unbalanced. Uh, uh, it should be more equal then. And, um, it ain't, and so for me to know that and 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 not uh, live that way and not portray the thing that way and be, you know, give equal opportunity to, to everyone that I try, that I come across in the business, um, I think that's a better way of looking at it. Because we all in the system, once you buy a pack of cigarettes or, or even milk, you're in the system. You just have to know that you don't, you don't have to portray everything that the system portrays. And so for me, uh, that light skin argument, is, it, it always comes up. And I'm like, I, I did work hard. I, did, I do have a little bit of talent. And I, I try to ignore everything that is the negative about the system and do things my own way. And that's how I'm fighting, you know what I mean? I mean, you had some bangers and I saw recently temperature, there's a temperature challenge uh, that's been yeah. going down. How long ago did that song come out? Uh, 2005 was when I recorded it. Damn. So, yeah. Are you talking? <laughs> Why do you think they have that light skin dog skin conversation about all this? I mean, we, we we see it especially with you. Why do you think that 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 is such a problem? Do they feel like light we represent we represent people? You know what I mean? And and uh, you know we represent people's feelings, artists. Mm -hmm. We represent their likes, their dislikes. You know, so a lot of the time people might look at a package and be like, oh well, he represents for the other side. You know what I'm saying? Um, or they might say it's easier because of how the system is set. Or you know, uh, just from being people being oppressed, they don't like to see someone, you know, with a different skin tone do it. Where it's like, you know, maybe it should be someone like myself. So that's all it is. I, it's a little bit of, uh, 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 probably, um, you know, misled jealousy. But but when you see these people in the street, no one says it to me except Charlemagne. <laughs> you know, you only want to go say it to me like like that. But I mean, you know, mostly I think people might say these things online, and then when they see me in the street, they see the, the type of person I am. It, the, their opinion changes, their perception changes. So I don't that's think all, it's, that's all I gotta do. I think it's probably more of a, a system thing, though, right? Because I think sometimes with the labels and the industry, they might feel like it's more marketable. So it's not necessarily that the audience feels that way because i feel like that it comes that way with women too a lot of women will be like well how come you know the darker skinned women aren't getting this look and it's a system and the way yeah. that it's set up and that's really more I've of seen, what it is i've seen i've seen amara and Aleg uh Nalega, yeah, that's amara amara Nalega, mm -hmm. talking about it and, and i agree you know i mean it's kind of strange uh but it's for us the people to see that and be like oh well i gotta support this um other, you know, my artists or the people who I respect, uh, I, I think need to shine. I gotta promote them in the ways that 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 I can, even if it's bumping it in my car or my ride. Let everybody hear it. You know what I mean, for me, it's for us to do the part. The system is set the way it is, 
and uh, we can always try to overturn it. But but from within, the best thing to do is to ignore that. You know what I mean? And, keep working. And yeah, keep working. I, I didn't. I don't mean to say ignore it. I mean to say, yeah, keep working hard and 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 don't focus on those negative things until our positive uh, aspirations and and energies kind of just overwhelm that. That's how I do it. Are you still signed to uh, Atlantic Warner or, or no, you're independent? No, I'm, I'm, I was independent for three years and then I signed with Island Records. Mm -hmm. So Island Records gave me a deal which is very special in terms of they allow me to put out normal dancehall culture records on the fly. Like whenever I hear something that I know is going to pop off, mm -hmm. I call them up and I'm like, yo, I know I don't got an album coming out for you right now, but this is going to happen. So I'm, I'm, I'm voicing and they actually gave me the permission to do Live and Living, which is the first album I've ever produced on my own label, came out of my own label by myself. And so it's kind of a, a different situation. I, I applaud them and I salute them for that. Uh, the next album I, I'm doing is called Scorcher, and that's coming out on, on Island Records, which is uh, uh, this summer. I shot one video for it so far. That album has people like Sia on it and Ty Dolla Sign. Ty Dolla Sign song is called Only Fans, and I'm about to drop that video, do the video for it soon. So yeah, big up to Island Records and, and everybody who worked with me on both projects. It's been a crazy year, but as I said, we use the studio to kind of just, you know, feel does more that mean, normal. Does that mean you have an OnlyFans page now? Because <laughs> you can't do a song uh, called OnlyFans I, I, and not I, have a... <laughs> I was considering it, but it was kind of like just a salute to these ladies who, uh, or, or anybody who's on OnlyFans, but, but this song is about the ladies who, who can uh, seemingly make money effortlessly <laughs> on, on this platform. No, you know I mean? it's a lot of work. So maybe maybe I will. Maybe I'll show a bicep or something like that. You don't got to show nothing. You could actually, because I know the Dream did one, but you could showcase the women too on your OnlyFans page, yeah. you know, and do different things. It could be interesting. It's something, I've been, it's something I've been toying with, the idea of thinking about it. But I don't know. <laughs> Just showing for our OnlyFans, it kind of sounds weird to me in terms of You already got in trouble last way. time you were on The Breakfast Club. If what? I said you already got in trouble last time you were on The Breakfast All Club. All right, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Charlie Man. <laughs> you know, we were talking about celebrity boxing matches. I think it's only right that you and Charlemagne should do a celebrity boxing match one time and all the proceeds just go to charity. I put my money on Sean Paul. Him talking about the light skin, no, everything. I, I think it's I think it's only right. I got kickboxing spit skills though. You better tell him. <laughs> you know what I mean, I can swing them knees. <laughs> now we have Miss Pat up here. Miss Pat was talking about the birth of VP Records and everything, and and she talked about you. How important was Miss Pat for your career? Oh, they were definitely a big part of my career. I mean, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of discrepancy that happens with uh, a, a label like VP. Uh, you know, being some a record shop at first and then graduating to become uh, a record label, and then um, move into the states. It kind of a lot of people kind of feel away sometimes, you know what I mean? Uh, but they gave me the stepping stone in my career that I could never uh, say I could never forget that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Big up to all of them. They're a VP. Um, you know, sometimes the, the things that happened with my career was overwhelming for all of us. Um, you know, they, they, I had to step up my game a thousand percent, and so did they. And so it was a good relationship to to build each other. Um, you know, they, they continue to to produce dancehall or reggae music, and um, you know, this kind of one of the biggest outlets that we do have. So, big up to them. There's a lot of uh, cats in the industry that don't really like to go that route, but for me, especially at that time, it was like VP is the the only way for me, um, and and it worked. You know, what I mean, we we had a great relationship, and um, now I'm trying to. You know, have my own label. So as you, you should. see how that goes. Um, now <laughs> I want to talk about Mr. Vegas. I saw he was on the Fix podcast, and you guys have this like long-standing issue. You feel like that can be resolved? I like that you watch the Fix. I really like that. Big mm -hmm. up Angela, because you know what I mean. It, 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 we, it, it's a it's a smaller podcast, and um, they talk in facts. You know what I mean. I, I like that they search out what's up in the dance art industry. Uh, when it comes on to what happened with me and Mr. Vegas, that was always, 
always something to do with the labels for me. Um, uh, you know, he was signed to Green Sleeves as far as I knew back then. In the interview, I heard him say he wasn't signed. So I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, by the end of the interview, he heard Vegas big up my wife and myself and say that we good people. You know, I call him all the time. Uh, you know, since then, we, we've toured. Since then, you know, we've done songs together still. I did a song for him. I think it was 2012 or uh, one of them years. Uh, it was more of them dance oriented type songs. We shot the, the, the music video in uh, in the state, in, in New York. So I've been friends with him. So I didn't really understand at first where he was coming from, but he was just telling a story. Mm -hmm. um, where it comes to him calling me about the video or whatever, I, I do not recall any of this. <laughs> so long so, ago. Yeah, and you know, likewise, the same thing with, with me and DMX. You know, God rest DMX soul. He was one. He is one of the greatest to me. And um, you know, when in in 2009, I saw a video on YouTube that he was talking about what's the beef between me and him, and I was like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't. You're like, I don't know. I, I have understand. problems. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people get vexed with me for talking about it now. Why you didn't talk about it before he passed away? I didn't. No one asked me that question. But now I'm bringing it up because I'm being cussed. Um, for, for, for things like that. And, um, you know, all I can tell you is that there was different times. You know, when, when DMX came to Jamaica to work with me and Vegas, we were both relatively young, small artists. Um, and he had two major albums out that same year. The next year, he put out another album that went, you know, all of them went platinum in the first week. So he was a major artist, and, and he still... Up to the day he passed was a major artist to me. Um, you know, the influence of him. But but there came a time in about 2005, which is apparently when he did that video, where my songs were playing a lot, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and maybe not all of his projects were playing. He had six major albums. And then, you know, I don't know really what took place, but um, again, that was just probably him speaking uh, of how he felt at the time. I had no beef with the man. He, him and me never had no 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 cell phone numbers to call each other. Right. So whoever he was speaking to led him to believe something else. I didn't speak to him about that. So, you know, uh, thanks for you to ask that question about Vegas, which led me into this. Uh, there's sometimes that you you know people might feel away. Like I feel away. People be doing dance or music, and I would call out Bieber. It doesn't mean I don't like his music. I love his music. I call out Drake. I like some of his music, um, but you know, it, 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 it is what it is. There's times where you just need to say what you want to say and get it off your chest. And I figure that's what happened with Vegas and uh, with DMX, RIP to him. I mean, as I said, me and Vegas are friends, bro. I call him when he got kicked out of church. I call <laughs> him when the thing happened when he was on, you know, talking about this girl problem that he had. I call him when, <laughs> Uh, you know, when, when I thought that he saw, said something very profound, I'd be like, yo, keep doing it. And he has done that for me, too. When I when I spoke about clashing in the song uh, called Lionheart and I was explaining why I didn't want to do verses at the time, mm -hmm. uh, he called me and he said he agreed with me, uh, you know, on, on many topics that I spoke on. So, when, you know, interviews come out and there may be a soundbite or something that I said, like, like uh, you know, um, whatever, you know what I mean? And, and, and people take it in the wrong context or fly with it a different way. If you listen to the end of that fixed interview, we hear Vegas saying, me and him is friends and we good people. So yeah. All yeah. right, good. I like to clear things up. Yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Cause Sean Paul don't bother nobody. He just be minding his business. Yeah, man, do my own thing. You know, the system is the system. It's set how it's set. And we just have for us get the system upset. That's mm -hmm. how we gotta do it. Now, you've been doing these music videos, so it does feel like you're ready to venture out and get back on tour. Do you have any dates set up? Um, I've been toying with the idea of some stuff for November, but there's some stuff booked for February next year. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I've been enjoying the family time so much, you know, getting up to be the breakfast dad. Uh, <laughs> you guys call it the breakfast club. I, I don't usually do this unless I'm coming to, to, to the radio station. So now... In this past year, I've been getting up, you know, helping out with the kids, and it's an amazing thing for me. You know what I mean? Uh, it's giving me a lot of uh, positive energy, and so uh, 
you know, for me, it's been not the greatest time because of the lockdowns and because of people I know being sick and, and, and all of that. But the, the light for me and, or the greatness for me has been the time with the family, especially time with my son and my daughter, uh, to be able for them to feed me around. You know, that's, that's been an amazing feeling. So you've been cooking? <laughs> not much, not much. I've been banned from the kitchen. My wife said I use too much garlic. So, yeah. The matches are up. Yeah. All right. Well, Live and Living is out now, and That's Sportster right. is coming out this summer. We don't know an exact date. Nah, I'm all, uh, You know, I told people May, and I rolled out the first single video for Scorcher in May. I'm shooting the Ty Dolla Sign video now mm-hmm. uh, in the next couple of weeks, and that will be out pretty soon. And I was hoping by the end of summer, yeah. All right. right. And well, we what's, appreciate you for checking in, man. And what's this Alpha Music School that I saw you posting too? Do you have something to do with that? I see it's a school for yeah. music performers. Yeah, Alpha Music School is actually, uh, you know, the place where scam music was born. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, 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 they taught these kids. It was a music school. They taught kids how to play, I guess, classical music and band music. And then they developed something and it was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and it was scat, you know what I mean? And scat turned into rock steady. Rocksteady eventually evolved to reggae and dub music and then dance off. And so it's the foundation of our recorded music out here um, in Jamaica. And I decided to help them out because up till a few years ago, they didn't have a computer. They didn't have any way to make music the modern way. You know what I mean, they're a great band school and music school. A lot of great artists came from, uh, um, you know, that school, a great artist from Jamaica. Uh, big up to people like uh, Leroy Smart. I think Gregory Isaacs went there too. So it's like, you know, uh, a good little vibe and it needs to be upheld, you know? So I went, I bought them computers, I set up the room and, um, you know, they just kind of gave me a tour around the place. So the pictures you saw is from a couple of years ago, but it's finally now renovated and they're taking applications to help to teach people uh, you know, to produce music. Uh, I remember going there and, and, and talking to some of the kids and they were like, bro, this course saved my life. And I was like, what would you be doing? They were like, I was only surrounded by badness. You know, people pushing guns on me, people trying to tell me what I should do with my life. And, um, you know, I moved, and I, I, I did this instead. And I said, so how is the community reacting in terms of you being there still and whatever. And they were like, they understand, they, they get it. Uh, you know, I, and, and it's great to be able to provide kids an outlet where there's something more than 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 just the badness and, and, and the crazy stuff that's been going on in Jamaica. We have too much violence, which is why I don't like the clashing aspect of our culture anymore. I was definitely all into it. Love to see the clashes, the, the lyrical um, potency that each MC or each DJ has is really dope, but then I bury my friends, you know what I mean? And so to give these kids opportunities uh, to, to step in life in a different way, or even just open their mind, even if they don't do music uh, for a living, is something that, that I, I really need to, you know, we all need to continue to do because music has helped so much people, you know what I mean? You're right. What if your kids wanted to be in the music business? Do they have that, those aspirations? What? My daughter is definitely the dancer. Every time something plays, she's like, ooh, like, moving. Um, and my son, he's showing interest in, like, singing songs and lyrics and playing drums. But, uh, you know, anything they want to do, because I remember as a kid, I wanted to be an Olympic swimmer, and my focus changed, right? So, so, so yeah, they, they'll, they'll probably have their focus changed. But uh, anything they want to do, I want to support them and be the good dad that I'm supposed to be. You know what I mean? All right. Well, Sean Paul, we appreciate you for checking in, brother. Pick up the album right now. And uh, we coming to visit you in Jamaica since you cooking and you so hospitable. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you better. You better, man. Uh, Jamaica, as I said, you can come down here and stuff uh, to the safe corridor. But also, I think we we, we started to have a, a little less cases and we are uh, coming out of this. And, you know, maybe I'll go get the joke and you can feel comfortable to eat my food. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to bring lip service out there and I'm going to get uh, Jody on there. 
as hey, always. Hey, hey, Marzo. <laughs> yeah, man, let's do it, please. <laughs> All right. Well, it's Sean Paul. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks.